the mail. All right. Okay, so what we're going to do is since nobody is ready with uh, anything, uh, nobody has any particular questions, we are going to make use of our time and we're going to go through um, what we did, uh, the instructions I gave you the previous day. Yeah, the instructions are given to you on the previous day. All right, uh, so what you do is you go to Google News, okay, and uh, then you click on because we're mainly interested in business, so you click on business. All right. All right, so here you can see all kinds of news which um, your first role, as I said in the uh, in the previous video, the first role is to scan scan the entire um, you know uh, list of headlines and then see um, what is interesting. Then when when you see something which is interesting, then you can um, look at it. So let's look at this particular. I won't use the mic. I think my voice will get picked up anyway because the mic is causing an echo okay all right so let's look at this this is one useful thing to look at okay many business uh, news websites are now coming out with this kind of guidance is uh, basically giving you a shortcut okay uh, of things what happened well while, while you were sleeping right so the things that you have to catch up on so you can see you can see this uh, item is there with uh, so let's follow along for the day and do this exercise all right so top 12 things to know what changed while you were sleeping all right so this is essentially markets focused so now so now some of you might think that uh, if i'm not going into finance why should i care about markets okay but that should not be the right attitude for an mba student for an mba student you don't really know what you're going into eventually right but uh, when you're going through your first year you should make sure that whatever is being taught all the different fields you have a pretty good grasp on what's at least you understand the basics of what's going on and so it's not really acceptable from a, for, for an MBA student to uh, have a very silo based approach okay you understand what a silo based approach is silo based means grains when they store grain they store it in these tall kind of cylindrical structures called silos all right so those uh, that's so when you just want to look at each subject in a different uh, silo like marketing is here finance is here and you don't want to integrate the two that's called a silo based approach which is normally not uh, accepted in in, uh, in for an MBA student so one of the things that people expect from an MBA student is uh, because remember you're not a specialist you're not a hardcore programmer or anything right so you're not a specialist so one of the things so if you don't have the skills of a specialist one of the things you better have is certain generalist skills which people expect from MBAs okay so you know you have to know what kind of product you represent and so then those aspects of the product should be well developed okay so one of the things that people will expect from MBA students is the ability to integrate all the different uh, disciplines okay we are calling them different disciplines like marketing finance operations okay strategy is an integrate integ uh, is an integrative subject itself okay when you do strategy but marketing finance operations HR all these things have to be integrated okay and that ability to do that that will uh, come only when uh, part of the uh, part of the uh, you know the uh, part of the way you get to that kind of stage is also by having a good understanding of all the different subject areas okay so if you have a shallow understanding of finance because you feel from the very beginning I'm not going to go into finance that's not really acceptable okay so basic understanding of financial markets because financial markets are very important okay in the economy so even if you're launching if you're a marketing guy and let's say you're launching a new product let's say Mahindra Mahindra is thinking of launching a new car product in Europe okay so if you if you don't have an understanding of the European economy okay uh, you may not you may you may end up launching the product when the economy is quite weak all right so uh, so that's why you have to have uh, you know here you may find a financial markets bias but uh, you should still follow it okay so here they're just giving you some um, what happened here okay for what basically this kind of information like market fell and all that for this you don't use uh, this kind of text it's much better to use um, what we call uh, this uh, okay so it's much better to use this I've already given you this link I think in the previous video okay so you can set up go to this link here trading view you can see that you can go there and um, why is this shaking is it because the loose contact no, I think he's forgotten to give a um, there was something else that he attached the other day the whole thing is shaking 
Is that a big problem? It's fine. Okay. But it, uh, yeah, and the screen captures from my laptop, so it won't affect the video quality. All right. So here, this is a very useful chart. Again, everybody who is not in, even people who are not going to take finance should do this because it's a good way to keep track of markets. Okay. And you can keep track of all kinds of other, uh, you know, economic variables as well. So the, you should set up a login on this site. It's free. You get some basic services for free. So set up a login, and then here you can see. So if you want to track the stock market, everyone should have an idea. The way you track the stock market is partly you listen to business news. That's fine. But you won't get a very good idea. You don't get a very good visual picture from reading this kind of market fell. This is just people are writing. This is not a very, it doesn't give you a very good visual picture. For markets, you should do something like this. Set up a login ID here. And here you follow the Nifty 50, how it's been moving. So that's why you can see that they're talking about the market falling and all that. So some of your seniors, uh, your seniors are now, some of your seniors, the finance guys are now doing a particular uh, pro a trading project within their IPM course, okay, which involves uh, use of trading software with live data to trade in uh, NSE stocks, okay. So uh, that's what they're, and one of the problems they're facing is they were all trying to buy and then the market is falling. So if you set it up like this, I don't know why, I think the data is, um, I think the, um, the, wi the Wi-Fi signal is very poor. Let me use my own uh, geo device. Okay. All right. So here you can see now when you look at a market, when you look at the chart like this. Yeah. When you look at the chart like this, you get a much better picture. Do you agree that you get a much better picture visually of what is happening to the market when you look at the chart, the long term chart? You can see this covers pretty much from the beginning of the year. This, uh, this information is covering pretty much from the beginning of the year, right? Okay, so you get a much better picture than just looking at some, uh, reading some uh, text saying that market fell for the fifth uh, consecutive, uh, consecutive time. Okay, so that's what you should do. This is how you should track markets. All right. So, uh, and in the previous video, I've given you ways to track uh, Indian government bond deals, Indian economic and market data as well. There's a, there's a site called Trading Economics where there's a sub, uh, they, they, they go by country and India is also included so you can track. So it's not sufficient to just track uh, stock markets, you should also track the Indian government bond deal. What is happening to the government bond yield in India, especially the 10 year bond deal. And also the uh, Reserve Bank of India, uh, the repo rate, which is the policy rate, okay, which is like a short term interest rate. So you should track all these, even for non-finance students, okay? You should track, should have a basic understanding of what's happening to the economy and how uh, financial markets are driving changes in the real economy, all right? So, um, okay, so this is the stock market and you can see, so we were covering that note, okay? What happened? So they're just giving you a, a discussion of what happened, selling pressure, this, that, okay? All right, so US markets, once again, if you, uh, they're talking about US markets, they're just giving you, uh, you know, they're giving you some reasons why this might have happened. But once again, for U.S. markets also, the most important, uh, everybody should track two of the major indices. Okay, one is the Nifty because you're in India. So everyone should track the Nifty and track it using charts. You'll get a much better picture. Okay, you can actually go and see this is only four hour data. Hopefully now if I connect it to my, I'll just connect it to my geo connection so that we get a better quality of uh, net connection. Yeah. If you, when you're going outside, see if you can find the Neeraj and just tell him to come inside because we are going to try and, you know who Neeraj is, the tall IT guy? Yeah. See if you can find him and then uh, tell him that this picture is shaking here. Um, we want to try and correct that. Okay. All right. Okay. So what was I saying? US markets. Okay. So two stock indices, which everyone should track. Okay. One is India because you're in India. All right. So you should track the Nifty 50. And then the other one you should track. And what I was saying is what you can do is instead of Sensex. sorry, Sensex is, Sensex is not required because Sensex is only 30 stocks and it's also an unweighted average. So Nifty 50 is much better actually. Okay. So Nifty 50 is a better index to track. Okay. So, and you don't want to track both of them. It's not really required. Okay. So to save your time, because you have to track a lot of other things as well, just track the Nifty. That's good enough. Okay. And try to follow how uh, the news flow is driving. Uh, how the news try to connect the news flow to the market movement you may not be able to do it and that's also a learning if you find that I'm not able to understand how the market is moving compared to the news I mean the media will always have an explanation but very often those those don't really add up okay but just try to follow the news as well and at the same time follow how the market is moving all right 
so this is only four hours of uh, data so like every four hours we take the data so this covers only from here you may find that uh, okay all right okay so uh, you may find so if you go to one day you'll get more data you'll get to see more uh, of what has happened see now you can see much more data on the nifty okay so you can see the, you get a longer term perspective yeah so you can key see, you can see it all comes all the way from 2013 all right so here you get so it's very important to be following major markets in this manner so you get to see the long term trends because these are the more important uh, trends otherwise what happens is when you look at this oh the wall street wall street fell from record highs etc then these guys oh market fell for the fifth cons consecutive session when you look at the media reporting like this so the media has a very short term focus and they tend to sensationalize things all right so they say the market crashed and all that but actually when you look at the long term trend it's not really now if you look at the if you look at the media news over the last uh, couple of weeks it's very bad right because the market is falling in the short term but when you look at a long term chart of the of the nifty you can see that it doesn't look so bad in the long term context are you following what i'm saying all right so that's why it's very important to be able to follow markets should be followed from charts okay stock markets bond markets everything should be followed long term trends and using charts not mainly using the media you use the media for other things use the media for news okay like there's a merger between two companies or some companies buying some other company that's that you can't get just from the chart you got you have to follow the news to get that information which is also important all right okay all right so you can do that you can change the time frame and you can play around with these things okay uh, and uh, so this is one and as far as US markets are concerned I was saying two markets which everyone has to track the next one is just use this ticker called spy you can think of James Bond and use this ticker called spy spy is actually an exchange traded fund okay uh, it's actually a proxy for the S&P 500 index okay which is the most important index in the US all right so you can see how uh, the US market has performed now again this is a daily chart so you get a lot of data here okay so you can see the long-term trend in the US market and you can see how well it's doing so one easy way to uh, get a sense of what the economy is doing in a particular country is to look at the stock market generally the stock market is a pretty good uh, uh, barometer or uh, predictor of what's going to happen in the economy yeah you know shake or I know last time you have to push here shaking Kelly can't but that something happened last time last time we were other okay all right so you can see this all right so you can see the long-term trend in the stock in the u.s stock market and uh, so so you it's very important to uh, to look at these long-term charts and eyeball these charts and get a feel for the market movement okay very important to develop the skill you should think of it as as if you guys all know surfing everybody knows what surfing is wind surfing all these guys take their surfboards and they go out and then they uh, the waves come and they try to ride the waves everyone knows surfing okay so one very useful uh, way of looking at financial markets okay and it's a completely legitimate approach is to try and develop a field don't think that I don't know anything about stock markets actually uh, you can every human being has a natural ability to detect patterns okay so one of the things you should try to develop is see if you can look at uh, markets and develop yeah just close the door properly yeah fully so uh, try to develop a feel for the market and try to make a forecast okay always try to when you're looking at markets try to look at so this is we are just still on the first topic they're talking about what is happening in markets all right they're just doing a market recap so we're going to use this to give you some general principles and clue you in to, into uh, this practice of tracking markets and forming views on markets okay it's a very useful skill all right yeah okay Are we shaking or Shaking or Shaking or Alright, okay guys. So what we were saying is, okay, 
but uh, so so what we were saying is you one of the things you do is you form so for the US market this is an exchange traded fund the spider uh, spiders trust SPY is the ticker just go into this box here and uh, type SPY all right and uh, you'll get this here you make sure your yeah, attendance sheet is first mentoring interaction student faculty concerns looking ahead okay you guys can just uh, we'll we'll distribute this later on we can just look at do this later on okay so um, is everyone able to follow what's going on yes sir. okay since you guys are not since ninja has not come so we you can just uh, maybe you can just come or you can sit there you can follow what i'm saying right okay so um, all right so so you follow spy here i'm just trying to see if um, because one of the things you have to do is yeah so when you are entering tickers here so what you do is basically you when you when you register you have this thing so when you when you're entering tickers here like i've taught you to enter nifty so when you want the nifty you just enter nifty and you'll see the option for nifty 50 then you click that okay similarly when you want to go for the spy you go for this just type spy but just make sure that this thing is set to all okay make sure it's not set to stock or futures or forex because then only if you set to forex then only forex tickers will come okay spy is not a forex sticker so it won't come so make sure that your thing is set to this you check this all you see the green light here the green line okay so make sure that you this you click this so here you can just enter any ticker that you're aware of okay so the tickers that you need to be aware of are spy and nifty okay for this so you get a very good way to get a feel for the u.s market and try to and this is what you should practice okay you don't need to have any understanding of markets but just look at markets and try to develop a feel just like a surfer now if i take all of you guys you guys have no training in surfing okay you have no not you have no understanding of fluid mechanics okay but if i just take you to a beach and give you a bunch of surf, uh, surfboards and, and i tell you to surf eventually you'll learn you will teach yourself eventually because you'll just try it out and then you'll drink water and then you'll eventually after 17 18 tries you'll start maybe standing up on the board and eventually keep on getting better right so this is basically so everybody has an ability to learn on your own okay and this is something you should practice uh, and while you're also studying about markets and reading following the news but practice this trying to practice and what you're going to do is let's say we look at the spy okay the u.s stock market most important see how strong it is and this is the daily chart and then you can actually uh, go a little bit here um, i mean get in a uh, get in a little bit use a one hour chart from there you can see the zoom in of the last part you saw that last part yeah in the daily chart you were seeing that last part where it's going up here you see a little bit more of uh, detail okay which you were not able to see in the daily chart are you following what i'm saying you can see more detail here right all these ups and downs which were not visible in the daily chart so there are two things you should practice doing okay and for that you don't need any understanding of economics or finance or anything that you just practice forming views on the chart okay the market can either go up or down is that clear everyone agrees okay. it either goes up or down so every time you look at the market you try to form a view just play a game with yourself okay and now you have the US market over here you can maybe zoom out okay you can see this seems to be a, a, a higher high here okay so this is a new high that it formed here okay so yeah so one of the things you can do is one of the things you should practice doing okay see now one of the important questions obviously in everybody's mind you understand you would agree that everybody for everybody the most important question is uh, what will happen now is the market going to keep on going higher or is it going to fall is that clear okay is everyone clear about that okay so um so lalita what do we have to do with these forms so you need to distribute them huh. they need to look. they'll fill it up we'll do it after the session huh. okay so we'll do it after the session okay all right so is every is everyone agreed that there's most important question that everyone has is at this point when you're looking at the stock market if you don't have any position to start with okay so should i buy now or should i sell okay let's take an aggressive approach and let's think about let's include short selling normally we don't when we think of stock markets we only think of buying okay but we should not have that kind of bias when we are trying to an develop our analytical skills okay so we should look at and ask this fundamental question should i buy in this kind of situation do i want to buy or do i want to sell okay is everyone agreed that's a basic question okay so try to develop that feel for and try to answer that play a game with yourself and try to answer that question uh, for yourself okay 
like you could look at this today and you could say that in this situation and uh, doing nothing is generally not try not to have a do nothing approach although sometimes it's good also not to do anything when you don't have clarity if you don't have clarity on the on where the market is going you say that okay i'm not going to do anything right now i'm going to wait until i have clarity okay but let's assume for the moment that you don't have that uh, uh, you know lack of clarity okay you are going to be either selling or buying okay so in this case let's say you look at this market and you decide that uh, i'm going to buy is that clear okay you decide that let's say you just form this view based on the pattern that you see because you can always form a view right eventually if i hold a gun to your head and force you to decide either to buy or to sell you'll come up with some answer and that will not be some random answer that will still be based on some assessment of the pattern right so try to develop a feel for it initially maybe you can just watch what happens and have a view on in your mind about what is going to happen so maybe about this part only the starting the starting part yeah the shares are increasing then it is definitely decreasing so it will definitely lead to the loss what will happen the current trend which one are you talking about so in the start only basic point of minimum yeah this one a, uh, drastic basically down yeah in the in yeah the yeah so so it will lead to the loss only yeah so what she's talking about is she's talking about this difference basically ups and downs lots of ups and downs yeah so what she's talking about essentially what she's talking about is uncertainty she's talking about uncertainty okay so everything is uncertain okay so it's stock markets and nothing special life itself is uncertain we don't know what's going to happen after one month okay or even one week or even tomorrow nobody really knows what's going to happen okay so everything is uncertain the stock market reflects the basic uncertainty of life but you still have to take decisions okay you still need to take a view on uh, we'll figure out how to deal with uncertainty later i'll show you one technique of how to deal with that problem but you cannot ever what she's voicing is a genuine concern it's a it's a natural concern that she's saying that you know this is a sharp fall that so you for saw example, if i'm doing a very good study it is decreasing it is increasing i am in the current trends but then also it will lead to the loss only na no? no it need not always lead to a loss i'm not able to follow what you're saying it may not always lead to a loss because sometimes you could also have a profit yes yes but what you're saying is sometimes there could be a loss that's what you're saying there is a drastic uh, drip so how are we able to know that you're talking about this fall so you're talking about this fall what she's saying that is that if she calculates the value that today the value will be essentially by the one by one one by one okay let's try and use the mic let's see if you guys have an echo if you use the mic no relation to cause the profit and loss let one by let's go one by one what is so it she's saying that if she calculates the value at a particular point that today the value will be this hmm. and if she buys the share she's saying what is the point of buying if i know that after some time it will fall only but i don't know you don't know yes, what I she's saying is she's not sure okay so i if i if i understand you correctly and what you're saying is that uh you don't want to buy because you're not certain that it will go up that's what you're saying because there's uncertainty it could also lead to a loss that's why you're saying yes it is you that is that what you're saying okay so that problem is always there okay in any decision you take in life that problem is always there you might discover that you decided to do an mba program okay you may find that after by the time you graduate the demand for mbas is not so high maybe in retrospect it would have been better for you to do some other course like whatever you know maybe uh, mca or whatever i'm assuming that you would have easily gone to an mca but i'm just giving you an example so everything is an everything is a gamble right so even today like maruti is building a plant in sanand okay they obviously feel that there will be enough demand to sell all those cars they're going to make over there but it's all a gamble because no one really knows in fact maruti has been not doing so well lately right car demand is actually slumping so everything the point i'm trying to illustrate is that everything in life not just stock markets but everything in life even in the world of business everything is uncertain okay so uh, so there is no guarantee ever but you still have to take decisions okay so the uncertainty is basically giving you uh, it that's what is basically what we refer to as the risk but the point is even in the face of that uncertainty you still have to take decisions you still have to make a commitment like you have to study something right otherwise you could say oh, i'm not really sure if i want to study mba whether mba will be remunerative or should i do llm or should i do mca and then eventually you decide not to do anything you just sit at home that's not an option right you have to make a commitment somewhere right so we we'll, we we'll show you how to deal with uncertainty later but the point the first thing the uh, the first thing when you asked a very fundamental question that uh, the presence of uncertainty is should not stop you from taking decisions 
because all decision making is in, a, in, a, in an uncertain environment. Everything is uncertain. Okay. So sometimes people say that there is, uh, you know, this is like. Um, uh, sometimes people say that. Uh, so let's look at this. We are going to just zoom into this last part here. Okay. Uh, we are just going to zoom into this by using a shorter term time frame. All right. So we are just going to look at this one hour. The one hour is uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You guys can go. You're being called to another room, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, uh, so decision making uh, under uncertainty—that's what most business, uh, you know, analysis is all about. Okay. So you will you will have uncertainty, and within that uncertainty, you'll have to take within that environment, you'll have to take decisions. Okay. So we'll show you how to deal with that. Okay. So coming back to one of the things you should practice is look at the charts and try to eyeball the charts and develop a feel for the charts. Don't get don't get uh, sort of demoralized by the fact that I don't know what's going on. I don't know anything about finance. I don't know anything about economics and all that don't let that uh, you don't really need to have that knowledge for this kind of skill to develop this kind of skill you just try to look at the chart every day if you look at something every day you will develop a feel for it okay so it's not uh, it's not difficult all right okay so okay so now what you do is so let's say you look at this chart and let's say you decide to buy okay as an example okay if you decide to buy the other thing you should practice doing is because obviously you are deciding to buy based on some kind of uh, projection that you have on the chart okay so as part of your training uh, in in uh, in, analyze, in in looking at markets and forming views based purely on charts okay as part of that training one is to form a view okay at this point you could have also decided to sell but i'm just taking an example of where you decide to buy okay, just for example <clears throat> then you should also decide at what point will you give up your uh, view okay are you following what i'm saying so which means i would do it this way that i would decide to buy okay at the current market price itself and we are taking all buy decisions at the current market price but i should also have so my analysis is not complete my practice is not complete until i also mentally tell myself the point at which i will give up my position now you bought that means you have a problem in, in some sense what she's hinting at that if you have bought now the market starts crashing then you'll have a problem you lose money right so if you bought one share let's say at 300 and then the market keeps dropping 292 292 88 284 280 if it drops all the way here you're losing all that money okay you're losing like 20 dollars per share okay and the us markets you trade you have to trade in the market lot is 100 lot 100 shares okay so uh, you're losing all that money so that you can't afford so therefore you need to have a plan this is where we come to directly to your uh, you know switch it off so this brings us directly to your question about uncertainty right so this is what you were talking about essentially that i buy now what happens is i bought it at 300 now the thing starts dropping and it goes all the way it keeps on falling 284 280 276 now what do i do now i'm paralyzed with fear because i'm losing money okay so the other thing that you should practice uh, as part of your training is um, is also form also have a plan okay first you form a view that you're going to buy okay I'll come to the selling part also later but first you form a view that uh, you're going to buy let's say okay as an example and if you've decided to buy you should also have a you should also mentally identify a point on the chart because your decision to buy remember you don't know anything about the US economy you are just looking at a pattern you're just looking at a pattern and taking a decision and essentially when you're buying what are you mentally projecting for this pattern are you projecting that it will keep on going higher or keep or, or start going lower higher right obviously your mental projection see the whole process that is happening because we are assuming here you don't know anything about the US economy we're trying to teach you to be technical traders it's a very important skills a very important skill okay so uh, you don't really know anything about the US economy so your decision to buy actually what happens is first you look at the chart and then you mentally form a projection okay based on the fact that it has moved like this where do I think it's going now is it going to keep on going higher or is it going to go lower now 
are you following what i'm saying this is what happens right so essentially you form a projection and so the reason you decide to buy is that in this particular case let's take my example i have decided to buy now any of you could have a different view you could decide to sell okay i'm just giving my example i decide to buy which means what have i actually done i have looked at this pattern and i have made a projection that according to me this pattern should continue moving higher okay so the stock market should continue moving higher so therefore i'm going to buy obviously is that clear to everyone because i'm a rational investor i want to make money okay so if my projection is that the market is going to keep on going higher then i should be a buyer not a seller is that clear okay so this is what how the logic works okay so you buy now you should also as part of your pattern projection because your decision is based purely on pattern analysis okay so therefore you should also do this part which is identify a point on the chart now i'm zooming in here you should also identify a point on the chart at which okay or beyond which you will give up your uh, view like i looked at this you understand what a view is okay i have a view that the indian economy will be very strong in the future i have a view that the european economy will be very weak okay this this is called a view that means like a it's like a prognostication okay like a projection so the other thing that you should do is then uh, based on i have this view that the market is so what is the what is the point on the chart beyond which i will uh, give up my view right now i have a view that the market is going up okay and what is the point beyond which the chart is different like uh, the companies that are in the trading barriers what is the performance and no at this point see your orientation is slightly different okay what you are doing is you, you are now talking about the companies and what is their performance and all that we are now trying to learn to trade in a purely technical way okay uh, so that is also important but at this point don't get into that so much but i'm just saying because remember that your view is based on you don't know anything about the us economy okay your view is purely based on the pattern analysis and the projection so you should stay focused on the pattern what you're saying is not irrelevant okay that is important that is in the realm of fundamental analysis okay but we're not getting into that right now because we want to try and understand uh, technical analysis as a pure approach okay how to use chart yeah mutual fund is trustworthy or not sorry mutual fund is trustworthy or not are they trustworthy yes, okay so that's a long question in the sense in general see there are lots of problems uh, with mutual funds okay uh, which uh, essentially so the same question you are asking whether mutual funds are a good investment vehicle yeah. okay that's what you are asking all right okay so uh, in this case what you should do is you should look at uh, see this this uh, this question is slightly outside the purview of our discussion right now okay so we'll come back to this question just save this question but i'll give you a short answer the short answer is that uh, mutual funds essentially uh, you know most of the most of the mutual funds don't perform better than the index okay so to answer that question we have to get into long a long discussion on active versus passive management stock indices benchmarking of active management performance uh, performance of actively managed funds they have to be benchmarked against an index okay so the short answer i would say is that uh, i mean it, it is it's not really a very good vehicle okay not a very good vehicle for uh, for the average investor yeah because they they have higher fees most mutual funds have higher fees and uh, they don't outperform the index okay so it's it, there's a it, there's a lot of nuance to this answer but it ha if i had to give you a short answer that's what i would say that the average investor should be uh, who to the extent that he wants to be in the equity market he should be investing in etfs okay etfs are exchange traded funds okay so those are uh, much those are examples of what we call passive kind of like passive management semi passive management so those have lower fees and they are therefore a better option because active managers are not performing the index okay short answer to you so that uh, the longer answer will come in uh, later discussions on finance you can see you can see some of the videos from your uh, uh, i've given you a sequence to follow okay if you want to um, uh, get a sort of uh, you want to start exploring finance okay as a start in the second year you should first look at the ipm videos which is investment and portfolio management I, it's there in the sequence is there in the email which i have sent you guys
what the what the video yeah 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 so okay okay so the links file i have not sent you so i'll share that file also okay that's a document file i'll share that but anyway you see that in the video as well, itself when i sh i've shared the video this morning so when you see the video you'll see the links there as well okay but i'll share the document also when uh, from, because i was waiting for all the emails a list of all the emails so that's why i didn't send it earlier but anyway so uh, but i'll remember uh, just remind me if i if you don't get it by the end of today just send me a reminder to send to the document okay so uh, but it'll be there in the video so so the when you get into so if you are uh, trying to explore finance make sure you go in the sequence which is given in the email which i sent just now okay which is you do ipm first then ifm and then fdrm okay because one of your batchmates i think was trying to look at fdrm first and then he was finding it confusing because it's actually a continuum body of uh, it's the same continuous body of material so you have to start in the right sequence you have to follow the right sequence so you start with ipm which has already started now you can take the latest version of the course which is going on and you can go to the course playlist so if you go here for instance um, so all these videos are there so if you go um, I'll just show you this all right so this is our first class of ipm so what you should do is basically go to this channel okay you will get the video today and you will get the i've given you the link for the channel okay so you can go to uh, the playlists okay if you go to the playlists you'll see all the courses so what i'm essentially telling you is don't start looking at finance from uh, here fdrm or ifm okay start from finance from ipm okay so this ipm summer which is going on now okay although this is the latest course go to this playlist and um, yeah if you go here you'll see all the videos are actually here okay so you can see all this so you can start from the first session onwards and then you'll get the that's the right way to start okay so if you want to explore finance you can look at it from this perspective okay that's fine all right okay so coming to your um, yeah so what we were looking at so we answered your mutual fund question to some extent okay so if you go forward and look at the other courses in some in some of the this topic has already been discussed either in ifm or fdrm one of the two courses okay uh, this is discussed under uh, the topic of traditional asset management versus alternative asset management okay so there i've discussed all these phenomena that the mutual funds are a form of active management mo mostly active managers uh, mutual fund managers and they're not outperforming the index so the whole issue of benchmarking everything is covered in that uh, discussion so you can go to those videos and get a better idea of that okay all right so what were we saying we're coming back to our old, old problem of uh, taking a view on the market and then also so remember that basically what I was saying is that your view on the market that is your decision to buy okay your view is that the market is going to go up okay which we call a bullish view okay if you if you feel that the market is going down then that we call a we'll, we call that a bearish view okay so bulls and bears all right so you can learn that also now so now how did i say how did i decide to buy or to sell because the most fundamental decision one of the most fundamental decision problems you face when you look at the market is should i buy or should i sell right okay so then how the, we are teaching you to solve one way to solve that problem is to just use technical analysis okay that is just to look at the chart patterns okay and it's a very important approach uh, so we are teaching it's a very objective and it can be done in a very systematic way so what we are doing is what have i done here i looked at the chart and i mentally made a projection okay based on my pattern analysis which any of you can eventually end up doing okay um, you don't need any training for that you need practice okay so uh, you form a view look at the pattern form of view for, take uh, i mean form a pro mentally form a projection on this chart develop what the uh, make a projection which way is the chart going the projection is that for me the projection is it's going higher and therefore i bought okay is this clear okay now what i'm saying therefore is 
uh, as a next step okay which comes to your ma managing the uncertainty but I'm not really sure that it will go up as she said it could also go down it could come crashing down I could lose a lot of money so how do I manage that risk okay because I need to make sure that I don't lose all my money so here we come back to the way you form the uh, how, the way you took the decision to buy you made a projection okay based on the pattern it's based completely on the pattern nothing else so you should also identify a point on the chart beyond which your projection is no longer valid in your own mind okay so let me give you an example okay suppose i say that uh, july is going to be a very dry month there's going to be no rain in july at all okay suppose i say that and then i find that the like uh, first 10 days of july there's heavy rain okay so obviously already my view is wrong okay but so so if i if i'm projecting some kind of damage to crops because of very dry weather but the first 10 days of july there is like heavy rain so at some point of time i have to because i made this forecast right that there'll be no rain in july there'll be a drought and the crops will be damaged but the first 10 days i see that there's heavy rain so obviously I, I can't just sit there and keep on saying that july is going to be a dry month right something is wrong with what i said is that correct are you following with my forecast something's wrong because the evidence that i'm getting okay and every day you get new evidence because life keeps moving forward so the evidence that i'm getting shows that there is some problem with my forecast right are you following what i'm saying so therefore at some point of time i need to have some figure like maybe it's 10 days of rain maybe it's five days of rain okay or maybe it's three days of rain at some point i need to have some kind of mental benchmark even before uh, july starts even when i made the forecast that july is going to be a totally dry month i should already have a plan that okay i said this but of course no one knows what will happen so if maybe there's rain for the first three days i will withdraw my prediction okay are you following what i'm saying something like that can be done right that's a logical way to approach so similarly my projection that this thing is going to keep on moving higher is just based on my analysis of chart patterns so therefore i should also and what is the pattern showing here essentially you can see here uh, as you saw here there was a big drop and then it's rising but you can see a pattern of highs and lows here you see all these highs small small highs can you see them and then you see all these lows here one low here low here low another low here can you see this so you can see this sawtooth pattern right going in highs and lows and you see this everywhere okay this is not some frivolous thing that i'm just pointing out to you right this is uh, this is something you'll see everywhere whatever chart you look at you look at economic data you'll see this all right so you can see this pattern so one of the ways i can do this is i see that okay this pattern is going in this sequence of high high another high here okay another high here then there's a low here there's a low here low here another low i can identify these points so one easy way for me to do this manage my uh, risk is suppose i bought at 299 okay now i can mentally say that uh, i'll set this point let me set this point because there's a low here okay so the market when the market starts what up when i've gone long when i've gone long this is called going long when you buy something we say we have gone long okay when you say when you sell something we say you've gone short okay so now when i've gone long what is my fear i'm not worried that the market will go up am i worried the market will go up i'm not worried about that because the market goes up i'm making money right my concern when i'm not able to sleep at night is because okay well, i'm remembering what she said that the market will drop okay so that is my concern so i'm only worried about the downside but okay we have to pick up the elements of stability now when there is a stable there is yeah stable. i'm not able to follow exactly what you're saying but i think you're trying to say that we should try and protect uh not lose too much money is that what you're saying so according to you we should play safe basically there is a stability it's not no, no, but if you are playing safe you can't make money <laughs> everything in life uh, uh, everything comes from returns right so uh, i mean sorry uh, returns come from risk taking okay normally sometimes in some situations in a in an inefficient market you can make returns without taking risk okay but uh, in general returns come from taking risk are you following everything has to come from because everything that when you go and take a job oh, I, I hit this thing I hope I didn't. okay when you take a job and you're earning money that's a return but that return came from what it came from the risk that you took you invested some money in doing an MBA program 
that investment may not have worked out because maybe by the time you graduate there's no demand for MBAs or there are too many MBAs you're not getting a good job okay you're having to work at a low skill job because there's excess supply of MBAs okay so you don't know what will happen when you enter the program you made a bet and that's why eventually but if you're making a return it's because you made a bet right you made an investment you made an investment in the MBA program and then you get a job okay and then you earn a return from that job a better example is to look at a business okay so if I were those who are making big money those are big money returns are coming from taking big risk right. so if you look at one of the big investors in India say is Dilip Karamal who has invested huge amounts in uh, he took massive bets on companies like Vodafone okay and uh, he recently exited from Shriram transport finance and all that but he takes massive bets Okay, thousands of crores of rupees he invests in a particular company and so that's a very risky uh, approach because it may not work out like in Sri Ram Transport Finance it did not work out but he made a very big, big return on Vodafone right so uh, and some other companies as well so he has this style of making very big bets so big returns come from making big bets right like there's this Japanese company called SoftBank which invested in Alibaba when it was very very small Alibaba was a very small company so this uh, guy called Masayoshi Son who's the head of SoftBank okay so he invested some 25 million dollars or something in Alibaba when it was a very small company and then he made like a billions of dollars of profit I think 80 billion or something like that he made on a 20 billion 25 million dollar investment okay so that comes because it's a risk because at 25 million dollars Alibaba could have gone bust as a small company you don't really know what's gonna happen right no one knows what would have happened because if everybody knew that Alibaba was gonna be very successful then everybody would have gone and invested okay the reason they didn't have enough investors at that time because nobody knew what was gonna happen right so eventually you have to take uh, risk in order to make a return you have to take risk okay so coming back to our discussion what am I saying follow the logic the, the decision uh, to buy was based on a projection that the market is going to keep on moving higher okay the chart let's just call it the chart the chart is going to keep on moving higher and that obviously is based purely on the analysis of the chart patterns because we are saying at this point we don't know anything about the US economy okay because we want to learn how to do pure technical analysis okay and so and therefore what I'm saying is and once you buy obviously you have taken a risk okay you could lose money if the market starts dropping so you're not worried so much about the upside you're worried about the downside now okay so at some point you don't want to lose a lot of money right so therefore what I'm doing is I'm looking at the chart patterns and I'm seeing that okay you see that all these lows and there are all these lows and there are all these highs okay so I'm not worried about the highs because if it moves higher I'm fine but I'm worried about the lows and if it has to drop a lot if it has to drop a lot it has to move through some of the lows like what I was saying earlier that it drops to 280 if it goes to 280 means it's gone through this low it's gone through this low it's gone through this low it's gone through this one also are you following what I'm saying right like in order to have 10 days of rain I must first have two days of rain you can't get to 10 days of rain without two days of rain so if it's going to drop all the way here to 276 280 it must go through all these lows right so as the market is going through these lows it is giving me a warning that we are moving lower like the moment the first rain comes that's my first warning that something's wrong with my forecast the first day of rain is already a warning to me so I could decide to withdraw my forecast on the first day of rain also but maybe I want to wait a little bit more I wait for the second day of rain third day of rain at some point I say that okay something's wrong with what I said okay are you following okay so if I'm worried about the downside based purely on the pattern one of the things I can easily do is I can say that okay I have bought this here okay I bought 100 shares at 300 okay but I if the market goes through this low I, I zoom in more and I try to identify this low here the low here is around 296 can you see that yes, around 296 74 types okay so we'll just call it 297 is everyone clear so I buy at 300 and but I identify but I, I don't want to lose a lot of money so at some point of time if this market keeps moving lower at some point of time I need to do what is called throwing in the towel you know that in boxing when the boxer is getting beaten up when boxer is getting beaten up the what the coach will do is if he wants to stop the fight he'll throw in the towel into the ring which means that we give up so that referee will stop the fight at that point okay so that's where the expression comes from throwing in the towel 
So at some point I have to throw in the towel, right? Are you following? Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm just saying that since if it goes a lot lower, it has to move, move through all these clearly demarcated lows, right? If it, it has to move through all these clearly demarcated lows, are you following what I'm saying? Right? So let's like if you're looking, if you're sitting in Calcutta and let's say a foreign invader is entering India. So you could say, okay, I won't surrender until they come to Patna. But they maybe they're coming through, they come take Delhi, then they take, uh, you know, Lucknow, then they take Allahabad, at some, and so on, slowly you can see that the situation is getting worse. So at some point you have to decide that you have to give, you have to surrender, right? Maybe you said Patna, that if they take Patna, then I will surrender. Okay, but because maybe the rule is that if you don't surrender, then you'll get killed, right? So uh, it's the same logic. Are you following what I'm saying? That in order to come from North to Calcutta, you have to come through all these cities, right? So in order to go to drop all the way to 276, you have to go through all these lows and these are clearly identified on the chart. Okay. Okay. And remember one more thing here, the charts, the reason I'm telling you to focus so much on charts is this data is 100% objective. Nobody can have another opinion on this. Okay. Like I might say that the future of the Indian economy is very bright. You might say it's not so bright. Those are subjective opinions. Okay. You understand the difference between subjective and objective? Okay, those are subjective opinions. But what was the temperature in Delhi yesterday? Okay, if we take the temperature at India Gate in Delhi yesterday, that's not subjective because we are talking about historical uh, information and temperature can be measured. So somewhere we can find the information on what was the temperature at India Gate in Delhi yesterday. Are you following what I'm saying? So that is objective information. So there is. So when you're having discussions, uh, keep an eye on this. The difference between objective and subjective uh, approaches. Okay, uh, objective and subjective uh, topics or information. So here, what I'm telling you is markets charts are 100% objective because they are just plotting what the information, what the last traded price was. Okay, and this is the objective date. This is objective information. There's no dispute about this. So when I'm worried about market moving lower, I can clearly identify these uh, points because these have been marked by the chart. There's nothing subjective about this. These are objective lows. So one of the things I will do is not only will I form the view. So as I said, I form this view. This is so it's 297. Let's say we call it 297. So what I do is I buy at 300, but I also have a plan that if the market goes through, I buy 100 shares at 300, okay, because my projection is that it's going higher. But if the market starts moving lower and goes below 297, okay, this point we have identified as 297, rounding up, is that clear? So I also have a plan that if the market goes through 297, then I will sell. I will no longer maintain my position. Okay, so this hundred shares that I bought, that we call a position. Okay, we call it a long position because I bought the shares. Okay, if I had sold them, I would have called it a short position. Okay, so this long position that I have, but as she was pointing out, there is uncertainty and she doesn't want to lose money. Okay, so you have to take some risk. You can lose. You'll have to lose some amount of money. Okay, if you don't want to take any risk, then you can't make any return. Okay, so uh, you have to lose risk some amount of money, but we are making it a small amount and we are keeping control over the whole process. Can you see that? So I'm also saying that I'm buying at 300 and I also have a plan that if the market goes below 297, I will sell those 100 shares. So then I don't have any, if I sell the 100 shares, then I have no position left. Are you following? So if I start initially, if I start with say $30,000 in cash, you guys have done balance sheets, okay? You've done asset side, liability side, okay? So if I start, let's say I have $30,000 worth of savings and I have no, now we are just doing a recap. Okay. We're doing a recap of, uh, of um, the balance sheet. Okay. So we can just do it here. Assets and liabilities. So if I have, um, actually I like to put the liabilities on the left. All right. So if I have $30,000 in cash, okay. No, I'm not going to write it here. Okay, so if I have thirty thousand dollars in cash, cash is shown on which side? Asset side. Okay, so I have thirty k. Okay. Okay, let's just call it thirty. So the whole thing is accounting is in thousands. Okay, the balance sheet is in thousands of dollars. So thirty thousand dollars in assets. Okay, and what should I put on the liability side? Yes. 
what is in the li what should I write in the liability side so on the on the asset side I write uh, so this is my I have nothing else I have no house nothing I only have thirty thousand dollars in cash that's my I'm now trying to make my personal balance sheet okay so I, on the asset side I write thirty thousand dollars in cash okay and what should I write on the liability side capital what capital creditors 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 forms what are the two basic types of capital no not fixed capital and working capital but uh, debt and equity okay so what we want to really say is equity and debt so we are giving a very basic uh, understanding of the balance sheet so the base uh, so the two types of capital are debt and equity so the liability side shows you the money where the money has come from how the business has been financed and the asset side shows you what the business has done with that financing have they just kept it in cash or have they spent those thirty thousand dollars and bought a whole bunch of shoes so in this case you now your cash has changed to inventory now you, if you're a shoe if you're a shoe trading car if you're a shoe retailing firm you bought a whole bunch of shoes okay now then your asset side has changed to shoes okay so now uh, now look at this equity and debt what she was saying creditors creditors would fall under equity or under debt debt okay now in this balance sheet that I'm talking about where should I put the so obviously the balance sheet has to balance so if there's 30,000 cash on the asset side what should be on the liability side we also have to have 30 on the liability side so should I put it under equity or debt some are saying debt some are saying equity anybody saying all three here is equity you're saying equity are you saying equity or no yes. debt you're saying debt that's why you said creditors okay but I didn't say that I have any borrowing I said I just have this is my own saving these are my savings thirty thousand dollars is my savings okay this money belongs to me I haven't taken any loans okay so in that case would you put it under debt it goes under equity right are you clear is everyone clear this goes under equity okay so this is what we call owners equity okay so or net worth you heard the expression net worth okay so this equity the share capital okay share capital plus reserves okay what we use here the Indian terminology but the, if you're talking about a generalized balance sheet uh, you know this is a highly abstracted balance sheet so we say net worth okay equity share capital net worth owners equity other thing they use the expression they use is owners equity okay is everyone clear okay now what happens now look at this balance sheet there's no risk in this balance sheet so we can use this balance sheet to understand what risk is and what is uh, you know uh, um, how you have risk and you remove risk okay so um, is there any risk on this balance sheet at this point there's no market risk as such okay the cash is cash is in the bank okay so there is some credit risk because the bank can go bank bankrupt uh, and then I might lose my so if you got your money in Punjab National Bank then you might have a problem but of course the government will bail them out but if it's a pri uh, other private man like we had a famous bank bankruptcy called there was a bank called BCCI Bank of Credit and Commerce International many years ago which went bankrupt and caused a lot of losses so many banks go bust in that manner okay so uh, there is no market risk on this balance sheet is this clear is everyone following okay so there is credit risk but there's no balance because the cash is in there now what do I do I spend this I spent 20,000 of the cash to buy shares what have I done here here I spent 20,000 of the cash to buy shares okay so the twenty thousand dollars or what would I said we buy three hundred uh, we buy at three thousand uh, at three hundred dollars a share let's say we buy three hundred uh, we'll, we'll take the actual price where is it here so what I do is I buy um, I'll just put it here 300 share uh, sorry I buy 100 shares minimum amount uh, 100 shares at the price is 300 okay okay so my entire 30k is wasted I don't want to do that I want to make this balance sheet a little bigger now okay so I'll start instead of starting with 30,000 cash I'm starting with 70,000 cash okay are you following okay 
so at uh, 300 dollars a share i bought 100 shares okay so now what happens to my uh, asset side the cash has been reduced by 15 thousand. Your assets will increase by 15 thousand. Yeah, not assets. Uh, um, Non-cash assets. Non Strictly speaking, what you said, what he said initially, the reason I'm correcting him, he's correct. Uh, but just a little change in the terminology is uh, we need a little change in the lingo, which is he said that ca cash in hand will go down by 30 thousand and assets will increase by 30 thousand. Okay, statement is almost correct, but there's only one missing problem. Assets, you should not be using, you should not use the word assets here. You should say non-cash assets because cash is also an asset. Okay, so what will happen here now? This balance sheet will become 40,000 cash and we'll say uh, 30,000, 30,000 shares. Okay. All right, so in the US markets, they would call this marketable securities. Okay, so we got 30K worth of shares. Okay, so this we say we call this a change in the asset mix. The expression that we use is that the asset mix has changed. Okay, the total size of the balance sheet has not changed, but the asset mix has changed. Earlier, the asset was asset mix was only 100% cash. Now we have moved from 100% cash to you know uh, 40 40,000 cash and 30,000 shares so there's a change in the asset mix is this clear the expression we use is that okay all right so how are we doing on time okay we have some time all right so so now what you have to understand is now is there risk on this balance sheet yes. now there is market risk because we have our risk manager here she's always worried that the market is going to go down right so there is risk on this balance sheet because your 300 you bought the shares at 300 but something might happen and the market might start crashing okay so you have to worry about managing this risk so what you do is as you uh, since you formed your view about uh, the market being bullish you formed it purely on pattern analysis you look at the pattern and you identify the lows and the previous lows and you know that if it has to drop a lot it has to go through these clear-cut lows right just like that example I was giving you that you're sitting in Calcutta, somebody is trading from uh, North India. So you can set up all these uh, benchmarks. You can, you know where Lucknow is, you know where Delhi is, you know where Allahabad is. So you can set up all these benchmarks that, okay, if he has gone through Allahabad means he has already come this much. Okay. Uh, so these are all benchmarks. So these are similar to that. These are all clear cut benchmarks which have been defined by the market. So I set this at 297. Okay. I have a stop at 297. Okay. So I have a plan that I will exit the market at 290. If the market falls below 297, I will exit. Is everyone clear about this? What does this do for me? This allows me to control my loss on one particular investment. Is this clear? Okay. So you're happier now. You're less concerned, right? Because we are not going to lose all our money. How much are we losing? Let's use the actual calculation 297. Okay. So we are losing. Basically, we have 100 shares. We have entered at 300 and we are exiting at 297. All right. So our actual loss is, maybe we should write it here. Okay, how much have we lost? What will be the formula? I bought 100 shares. Okay, first let's do the number per share loss. Per share losses, we want to write the loss like this. So that it will come out as a negative number. Okay, the exit price. My exit price is 297. Are you following? My entry price was 300. Yes. So we write the formula like this so that it will come out as a negative. Okay. Now, is that good enough? Do I need to add something else? Into number of shares. This is the loss per share into number of shares, which is here. Okay. So I've lost 300 rupees, uh, $300. Okay. Is everyone clear? Okay. So now you can see out of your total wealth of 70,000, you invested only a little bit in the shares, in uh, the shares that you bought. And although you bought 30,000 worth of shares, okay, your gamble, your bet that you made, you made, you understand what I say when I say that I made a bet, okay, just like when you're sending, when in the World Cup final, Dhoni promotes himself and goes up in the batting order, he's making a bet. He's making a bet that that strategy will work. It may not work, okay. So that's called, that's what we call making a bet. So everything is basically a gamble, okay. So, but you made a bet, you invested $30,000 in shares. But actually, the uh, risk on that bet was only three hundred dollars. Are you following this? 
when you buy 100 shares at $300 a piece, $300 per share, you buy 100 shares, the value of an investment is $30,000, right? That's why your asset mix changes. 40,000 cash and 30,000 shares, okay? That's the value on the balance sheet. But the actual loss based on, because of the way you managed your risk, because you looked at this chart, you looked at this chart and you said, okay, if it goes below 297, I'm out. Okay, which means I don't need to have any more risk. Okay, and being out, again, understand it from a balance sheet perspective. When you go out, what happens to your balance sheet? It won't be forty. It won't be seventy thousand exactly. It'll actually be how much? Sixty nine point seven. Right? Are you following? You are not following. I think you are not hundred percent clear. You understand why sixty? Why is it sixty nine point seven now? Now I'll wipe out the shares. Now it is these thirty shares are not there. No thirty k shares because I've already sold it off. I bought it at 300, I sold it off at 297. Okay, now I'm back to the next balance. This is our scenario three. Scenario one was all cash before we did anything in the stock market. Then we changed the asset mix, we bought the shares. Okay, and then that is scenario two. Now, scenario three is the market started dropping and we executed our plan. We had a plan to sell at 297. If the market went below 297, we sold it. Okay. And now we are back to all cash. Okay, once again, the asset mix has changed to all cash. There's no more risk on this balance sheet, but we have suffered a loss. So when you have suffered a loss, the size of the balance sheet will shrink. When you make gains, the size of the balance sheet will increase. Okay, are you able to make this connection between accounting? Is it useful for you to refresh your accounting knowledge in this way to understand it with respect to a real transaction? Okay, so now, you are able to understand why 69.7? Why? Why 69.7? Why not 69.5? 297. So yeah. So the correct answer is what she is saying. That it's 69.9. Why is it not 69.5? Why is it 69.7? Because you have lost 300 dollars. Are you clear? Everyone clear? Okay. So now you have a new balance sheet. Obviously, now the balance sheet has to balance. So your equity will also can't can't be seventy thousand anymore. It has to become seven sixty nine point seven. All right. All right. Okay. So now you can see. So this is essentially what we call in the U.S. markets. You'll see there's a convention of giving a statement called statement of changes in shareholders' equity. You can see how shareholders' equity has gone down because the company suffered a loss okay so you have to understand this basically tells you clearly that equity is risk capital okay whenever there's any loss to be borne by the company you can't tell that if there was any debt in this company like she was talking about creditors if there were any creditors in this company and you lose money can you tell the creditors to go take a uh, like you i owed you 100 dollars, but can you make it 97 because i lost some money can you say that to creditors you can't so debt holders will not accept any losses okay they will want to be paid in full so whenever you have a loss it has to be borne by the shareholders okay so that's why we say the share capital is the risk capital okay that's the capital that bears the risk debt will not bear risk okay it will provide you funds but it will not bear risk okay people are getting restless we still have 10 minutes right okay so now you understand something so what i was telling you to do is um that when you form a view so so far you followed what the plan is okay so in this manner now of course as you know now there are two things that can happen that when you buy either it can go up or it can go down now you've already got a good plan for when it goes down are you satisfied that we have a good plan if it goes down, I've already identified a point on the chart beyond which I will not uh, participate anymore. I will sell my shares and take my loss and be out. But the beauty of taking the loss is you can't lose any more money. You can't lose any more money on that investment because you've already sold it. You're gone. You're, so you're safe now. You took a loss, but it's a small loss, right? Are you following? There's a major, there's a, there's a story that they tell about Saddam Hussein, you know, when he invaded Kuwait and then the u.s army came in and you know they they intervened so there was a story then that initially he was told 
that you should just go back okay and then obviously he suffered reverses so but he didn't want to go back and take a little you know humiliation or something so eventually he had to suffer a big loss so the expression we have in the financial markets is that if you can't take a small loss eventually you'll take the mother of all losses which means it'll wipe you out completely so if a guy who doesn't want to take like this 30,000 this 30,000 fellow okay he goes in and he buys uh, 300 uh, 100 shares at 300 but he is not willing to accept any losses because remember that when you take this 300 loss you have actually lost money as long as you don't sell it you can still say no no it will come back okay so you have not lost money yet okay on paper you are losing but you have not crystallized your loss so so therefore uh, but eventually what will happen is it can keep on falling and falling and eventually you may lose at twenty five thousand twenty thousand dollars so it is better to take a small loss than to have to take the mother of all losses right so this is what so therefore what i'm telling you is what you should practice doing what you should practice doing is just eyeball the charts now i've already given you two markets to track s p 500 and uh, nifty 50 just keep looking at this and then i'll show you another let's discuss let's be clear about what has to be done you have to look at the you have to eyeball the chart form your opinion make a mental projection based on your pattern analysis okay mental projection whether it's going to go up or it's going to go down okay if you have a clear view okay then you mentally take a position mentally make a note that i have bought 300 shares okay at this price but at the same time you should also make a note that where where will you get out if you start losing money at what point will you exit from your uh, trade are you following what i'm saying so your your game is not complete until you also practice this mentally identify a point on the chart beyond which you will sell out or buy back are you following yeah okay so you're nodding aggressively like almost the session is over okay we still have some time we have seven minutes okay yeah yeah sir you are going short when you realize that the market is going down yes okay why would somebody else want to buy your shares if the market is going down because that's why you have a market because people have different views right people have different views so if you are uh, you you are selling because you have a bearish view but everybody in the market doesn't have a bearish view there will be some other people who have a bullish view or there could be some people who have sold earlier now want to buy back and square their position so there is always a uh, you know multiplicity of players in the market okay so you can um, so that's why you have um, that's why you have this thing so is everyone clear as to what has to be done okay practice forming a view and practice also forming a so this thing is called a stop loss okay in lay, layman's terms okay it's called the stop loss okay technically it's called a stop order the order that I have to sell at 296 that's called a stop order but in, in layman's terms we call it a stop loss so have a view but also form a stop loss uh, identify a point on the chart okay which will be your stop loss and then practice and see how well you're doing okay you can practice and see how well you're doing all right so the two things spy and nifty you can also look at individual stocks okay there's no but try to stick to if in in india you try to stick to nifty 50 stocks okay go to the nse website and identify if you watch the ipm videos because i've given them instructions uh, you can see what i've told them nse go to the nifty 50 website identify the, uh, the no, go to the nse website identify the nifty 50 stocks and only trade those stocks only track those stocks in the us you can track major stocks like you can take uh, say amazon big companies take big companies is a useful learning okay if you take a small company then right so here you have amazon we should have more data okay now you can see what amazon is doing now you can always here also you can decide what to do okay if you want to uh, so we can take another sh uh, stock where we have this going down so amazon these are some of the tickers okay amazon is amzn is the ticker for amazon if you don't know the ticker you can just uh, enter the name suppose you want to do uh, you want to do facebook okay here you just type face and you'll see that the ticker for facebook is fb so facebook just made a new high okay uh, but it's already fallen back it's very interesting um because facebook is facing a lot of they just had to pay a five billion fine 
okay but okay that's fine they still haven't made a new high this was the high okay from which and you can see how sharply prices drop okay so this was after earnings release there's a dramatic drop in the price so the price they closed here around 216 and the next day the next price was 178 so this is partly the risk that you're looking at prices can move very dramatically especially after earnings so form a view on this suppose let's say on this facebook you feel that facebook is the story is over okay now facebook is uh, going to go down okay the stock is too expensive so in that case what you would do is you would sell at market 201 obviously if my view is that this stock is over this story is over okay uh, and it's going to go down a lot okay it's going to go down to 80 60 levels so i will go short at 201 sorry no 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 not like that in this case right now those things are also relevant those factors are also relevant but right now i'm trying to teach you only pure technical trading so when you're practicing pure technical trading try not to corrupt your mind with uh the when you're practicing pure technical trading you can actually think about it it's not a problem i don't want to put restrictions on you you can even put in all these factors like the fine regulatory oversight and all this stuff regulatory burden this is going to come up and they will have problems with uh, you know the cryptocurrency that libra will also not take off okay so it could be because of all these but in this case i'm just looking at patterns i'm just looking at a you notice one something very important here in facebook that this major low okay it was moving very strongly this major low but when it dropped it fell below this major low you notice that long run it's still increasing so it can go either way there's no guarantee as she said there's no guarantee okay nothing is guaranteed it can go either way but you need to take a you need to take a position right you need to take a view otherwise you can't make money if you just sit on the sidelines then you can't make money so you have to do or to make no no that is what see what we are practicing now i'm trying to give you a simple approach technical analysis is a very simple approach okay because so you don't have to get into the details of fundamental analysis earnings analysis economic analysis and all that market share digital advertising and all that stuff so you don't have to get into all that it's a very simple approach so i'm trying to show you so both approaches are valid okay so i'm trying to show you now only technical analysis i'm not saying that the other type is not valid we'll come to that later but in a way in order to learn an approach you need to learn it in the pure way okay what is pure technical analysis purely looking at chart patterns and taking a view okay so here i just look at the pattern i see that this thing was broken okay and after that it never went above this high okay can you see what i'm talking about in terms of trends and patterns i see that there's very long uptrend since the ipo okay and then it's gone up a lot went to this new high went from here this low but then after that it dropped below this low very important low but never went so far it has not made a new high are you following what i'm saying this pattern analysis so i just take a call i could be wrong okay so based on this pattern analysis i say facebook is going down the story is over so i will sell it at 201 okay but again comes to the same part which we discussed okay one minute left i'll just explain to you what i'm going to do on facebook okay 201 i sell it at 201 okay 100 shares okay i sell 100 shares at 201 but again i must identify because see what was my view this this major low was broken then uh, from here it had gone to this high then after that no new high was made that's basically what is driving my view so one of the things i can easily do what will be my uh, stop loss level because uh, my view is that this stock is now over the story is over here it's going straight down 60 80 dollars okay so obviously if the markets now start shooting up above this previous high whichever whatever it was i think 220 whatever let's take it as 220 okay let's say it's 220 the market starts shooting up over 220 obviously something is wrong with my view is that clear so immediately i will exit my position so i identify this high as an easy marker for me that beyond this point my view is wrong okay so i put my stop over here so what am i losing 201 to 220 19 dollars per share 
this is clear okay so this is now you get the feeling of what i'm saying now you can just practice okay practice this for yourself the very very useful skill probably more important than anything else you learn in, in a formal way if you can master this you'll have tremendous confidence and you'll be able to play in the market and you can play safely because if you practice risk management you see this is what risk management is i'm just not going short at 201 i'm also putting a stop order at 220 which means that the market cannot really destroy me because i can only lose 19 dollars per share are you following this is how you maintain control in the investment business this is the most important part of the investment business is the use of the stop loss and the control of risk so here i sell 100 shares okay what's the worst that can happen 100 shares times 19 dollars that's it i can't lose more than that okay so maybe i can live with that okay so therefore this is how but if it works out think about it if it works out then i hold it till if it goes to 80 60 dollars then i make what 201 to 60 dollars on that 100 shares are you following okay so this is how you uh, manage uh, you know an investment book okay so you can try indian stocks also if you enter tcs okay just enter it here then click on tata consultancy you can just think of names of companies and enter the tickers are you following what we have done yes. okay so we've learned something useful you can try and practice this okay and if you have any doubts you can always come to me and then you can follow those uh, so please tell your batch now we we'll, let's deal with the uh, i'll stop the recording any other questions at this stage now no one's going to have questions because the time is over yeah yeah see in my opinion and my opinion is is the same as warren buffett's opinion you don't need a very high level of math skills to be very good in finance you need to be comfortable with algebra okay high school algebra based i think beyond high school algebra you don't really need okay so the use of finance and in, uh, uh, in, in the use of mathematics and finance according to me is massively overdone okay it is massively overdone most of it is totally useless most of the mathematical models are completely useless but you should not have a fear of maths because algebra is very useful to solve a lot of finance problems a lot of decision problems so if you have a fear of maths then you can't even use algebra properly okay you'll see how decision problems we can model the decision problems in a very useful way by using simple algebra just high school algebra and we'll program it into excel okay but into a spreadsheet but uh, you don't need high levels of math but one of the problems you'll have if you want to take finance in your second year is there are certain tests please check with lalita you need to get some cgpa or something in your fm1 fm2 otherwise you won't be allowed to take finance so make sure you cross those hurdles okay but as far as i'm concerned and you can check warren buffett i'll give you the video also on this warren buffett has also said this that you don't need a high level of math skill in finance okay so which is that true so all right any other questions guys okay so i'll stop the recording here and then we will